Sound. When you talking about an entrepreneurial, you talking about an original staple of the cannabis game. You lie, baby. You know I tricked you, right? Huh? I tricked you, and when you came by, I was like, "My fuck, I'm gonna get a chopping game out of him." We never chopped, really chopped it up like yeah, right. on this level. So it's all good. You know, a chance now, so I'm yeah, ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You say stay ready, so you don't have to get ready, man. It's gonna be, it's gonna be one right here, man. This my dog right here. Uh, you know, so this my brother. For those that don't know, this my brother Felix from the Gas House. I go way back with him. How many years have I known you, brother? Mm. Fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. Yeah, he used to sleep on this man's couch. Learned a lot about about life uh, through him and my brother Phil. Rest in peace, Phil. But I wanted to bring you on here and just kind of like, man, we got a lot to talk about, man. We got a lot to talk about, man. A lot to talk about. Uh, a lot, yeah. Uh, my phone's been going crazy with the social club, man. Social club's out. Uh, yeah. People, I mean, Trick Trick just hit me. Yeah. So he's in there. Oh, yeah. Boom. About to verify his ass. Right. We all been shadow banned. Have you been getting better engagement on uh just well, like- well social club gave me an engagement just I mean off the jump. And so like uh with the IG, you know how that go. When I put up your video, bro, I got eight comments. Like I get fifty, sixty, sometimes a hundred comments. So it's almost like made me feel like somebody like facial recognition. Something. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that was just weird, you know what I mean? And then what's crazy, IG has me so trained, even when I went to Social Club, like I wasn't, I wasn't posting bud shots at first. I know. <laughs> and then I, I realized, I'm like, oh, I can post bud shots. Wait a minute, you know what I mean? So I started to post bud shots. You know, I had to get used to retraining my brain, you know? Yeah, we've been uh, about to roll up some Pluto, by the way. Oh. The man's here. You know I needed my issue. Yes, sir. We've been trained by uh, Instagram also, too. Like, I see people signing up, and they're just putting the underscore name. They had to adapt from Instagram because they've been deleted so many times. You know, they'll put, like, shout to the brother Masonic, but he put, like, Masonic 4.0. It's like, wow. Nah, yeah. man, you, you're Masonic, you free. man. You yeah, be free. You're we free, free, free over here at Social Club. We free over here. To free, man. Post free. whatever we want, long as it's, you know, within reason anyway. You know what I mean? You're always going to have somebody that's going to be doing too much. But if you do too much, you know, you know it's going to happen. How do you if you do too much, man? All that hardcore stuff, hard drugs, oh. all that. Nope. Like that. That smell, right? Yeah, Pluto is one of a kind, man. Is, like, man. I feel like, I feel like Pluto, I got to give you a lot of respect because these days people are so, even myself, are so fast to move on from a strain. Like... We drop. We try to compete with some of the guys dropping a bunch of different things, and you stuck with this motherfucker. You just push this shit. All right, I pushed it. Uh, you pushed it. You it kept. Is. You kept the respect high, even yeah. on on the micro batch of Pluto. Yeah, I, I like that. I, I kind of looked at it like that from the beginning. Uh, remember, I was talking to you about creating. I always think of like liquor. You know, I like to drink. I'm a guy that still drinks the same. Uh, Tequila, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I try Casamigos or whatever. I started drinking Patron and so they get along with my body. And I was just like, okay, people like Hennessy, people like, you know, people like their things, man. They like what they like. And, yeah, and so Pluto's gonna be one of those things. But I watch I watch how you do Pluto and made it a staple. Like you weren't yeah. jumping around all over the place. Nope. You were like Pluto me, motherfucker. Pluto me. Pluto, 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 Pluto. Yep. yep. And to be quite honest, at the Florida opening, one of the best sellers. At the yeah. Vegas opening, I watched it because I was right, right there doing the meet and greet. Right. One of the best sellers. Like, people fuck with the Pluto. They fuck with it, man. You yeah. got to have it, man. You know what I mean? You can't, you you might cheat on them sometimes, but you got to come back. You know what I mean? Yeah. You always got to come back. Um, she just had a lot of characteristics that people like. You know what I mean? So, you know, you It's candy, about. but it's yeah. strong candy. It's got that soap that we like, like the same kind of soap that's exactly. in cookies. Right. When you smoke a Pluto, Jane, you walk in the room, you smell that good soap. You smell it good, so you smell it. Yeah, oh you yeah. You smell it, and you can blindfold you, and you can smell it. Uh, once you had the real thing, none of the imposters. You cannot uh, fool anyone who's ever had a real Pluto. You can't just no. put something in a bag. There's no way. Once you had it, I mean, you know what it is. You know. 
Tell me about the micro batch, because I really, I was really excited when I seen that, and you put respect on that small batch yeah. drop. Yeah, the small yeah. batch. The micro batch was something that we uh, we did down in Mendo, and so it was a uh, a six light room, six a six light room, and we knew that it was gonna come out fire, you know, just like then the rest of the batch. So every batch is fire, but just those small batches, they're just. Uh, you know what it was. You had it when you came to Atlanta. Man, so, listen, you know. that jar. Yeah. That yeah, jar was nice. responsible for finishing my album. I mean, I I got that jar. I sat in that studio in Atlanta and knocked out the last songs from uh, on From Sea to Sail. But that shit was candy. That shit, shit was candy, man. But I see why you call it the micro batch show. Six lights. You got a lot more attention on the plants. You're able to really just make sure that yeah. motherfucker come out fine tuned. Yeah, exactly, a lot of attention to detail, man. You think you're gonna do that on the rec market, like a little more? Like, are you gonna try to find smaller grows in each market and try to have? <laughs> well, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm looking for now, and that is the reason that we purposely kept it the way we do. I didn't want to commercialize it, and I wanted to be treated really special. And so, yeah, we're in the process of identifying uh, smaller grows. You know what I mean to grow it in because. Uh, we want her to stay fire, you know what I mean? We're gonna keep putting out fire, we want her to be consistent. And uh, as we all know, when you go really big, it's kinda hard to do that. Like, we all know that, I don't care how good a grower you are, so. Uh, yeah. well, I, I see a lot of people on interviews, and I, I can never use this with you, like the, so take me back to the beginning, cause that shit. Oh, okay. Look, it's, it's a great thing, Woo. but I've known you for so long, I feel like we could do a little more players, okay. so. What do you wanna go to? The way I, the way I say it is like this, like, what does the word legacy mean to you? So in our business, a lot of people are using the word legacy. I see people talking shit about me saying legacy in the industry, right? And you look at their age, you're like, yo, I've been yeah. doing this for fucking 21 years, right? Yeah. When it wasn't cool to do it. Le yeah. I've been doing it for 21 years legally, right? Let's just say it like that. So my point yeah. is, a lot of people ain't really been getting their hands dirty for a long time. What what defines the word legacy to you? If someone says, is that a real legacy operator? Because I consider you a real legacy operator. I think just the time and experience here. And I think, too, I would say, you know, you should at least have a decade in, you know, when you're talking about just real legacy or what have you. Uh, myself, I've been around this thing for 30 years, man, in some form or fashion. You know, so. Uh, 30. Yeah, yeah, 30. 30 years in some form of fashion and influential in some form of fashion. And you were probably in your earlier years somewhere where it just was not cool at all. Oh, it wasn't cool. You got to know that. <clears throat> I'm uh, originally from Mississippi, right? And uh, it's, it may still be on the book, but, you know, Mississippi was, you know, you could get life for 10 pounds. And so that's when it was real. So... That's why, I like, you know, I take things a certain way because this was real, you know. Ten pounds, life sentence, that's where I come from. And uh, to see where it is now, you know what I mean? So uh, we risk a lot to get this thing here, you know. We risk a lot. That's crazy lot. as fuck. You think about it because there's probably still people serving time, long, real time, for weed in Mississippi right oh, there's now. There's a guy in Mississippi right now serving time. Um, you know, I see various organizations trying to get him out. <clears throat> He's doing a life sentence for two ounces, I think, but he had a couple prior charges, but... That's that, the that, sticker, though, two, yeah, two he, zips. The two zips, he ended up getting him a life sentence, you know, down there. That was like, that was nonviolent. He had a couple other charges, but I still don't think that that man deserves life behind that. Uh, I know he doesn't. So the term legacy is a decade to you, someone that's been decade decade in. For me, like legacy is the time, but also someone that's risk. Experience, experience, that risk, yeah. Well, it's, it's the time they put in, it's the experience, but it's also the, what kind of risk did you take to get where you're at? Right. Because yeah. we've all taken risk, and some of us have taken even a bigger risk, but if you're just getting in the game five years ago or seven years ago or 10 years ago in the medical stage, you're 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 from the business, you're from yeah. the industry, but are you legacy, legacy? Like, did you risk your freedom to get where yeah, you're at? Legacy, shit? legacy. You know the things that we kind of was doing 20 years ago. You know, yeah, definitely risking freedom, and not only your freedom, risking your life. You know, risking got, your life, got brother. friends that are not here behind, you know behind this, you know what I mean? So, yeah, we uh, we gave up a lot, man. You know what I'm saying, to get where we are, you know? But that's why I've been so, like, when it came to, like, the, the Proposition 64, I've been so on you about, like, man, 
come out come out and start swinging bro because you stuck with this i remember i remember we were getting high in atlanta many years back before it was even like before like like what people are doing now with weed was even cool like the sharing of photos and plants i remember i seen that calendar and that's what made me really fuck with you yeah. more than anything and i always tell people this because yeah. you had a calendar you made and it was the firest weed ever. It right. was all of the Cali, the Seattle hopeful. weed. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I asked you when you made it, and when you told me when you made it, that's when I tripped out. Yeah. Yeah, that was back in 2004. So we made that calendar in 2003. So that was 2004. Now looking back on it, that was 18, 18 years ago. So uh, 19 years ago, and people just like, you're going to jail for making that calendar. And when they was at in Georgia or whatever, and I was just like, oh, whatever, you know, I'm going to make this calendar, you know, and I made it. We made 10,000 copies. They all sold. I mean, all sold. And then I didn't even have one left to keep. And about two years ago, I got a phone call. Um, and it was from a friend of mine. And he's just like, you remember the calendar? I was like, yeah. He's like, I got one. I said, I got to have it. And he gave it to me. So I got it at my house. Now, that's going to be in the Marijuana Hall of Fame. That's going to be here after I'm gone and whatever, whatever. But um, the type of... A tree that we was growing back then and producing back in the early 2000s was, you know, equivalent to what we're... Well, it actually, it was better now. It was better. It was well, the, better. the thing is, like, that it says a lot... This water down. It says a lot, too, because, you know, some people get in the weed game because they want to make bread. Some people get in the weed game because they got to connect. Some people get in the weed game to, to get in the weed game, but, the, you know, the, what that showed me that day when we met each other, well, not when we met each other, when we were getting high at your spot, we kind of like bonding and getting yeah. to know each other a little more back in those days, 2000, whatever it was. I was like, man, this boy loves weed like I love weed because to take the time to make a calendar like that, and you're going to have to you're gonna have to re-release this calendar. Yeah. And yeah, it was a real long photo shoot yeah. with the buds, strategic, colorways, the whole shit. And this was like early 2000s. So I'm like, yeah, yeah bro, like it wasn't like you were just doing what you're doing because you wanted to make bread. You really loved the weed. Yeah, I love it. I always loved the weed. Always. You know, even when I was in school, I just always loved the plant. It was never about the money for me. And uh, never about the money. And the older I got, when I really realized that it was actually helping people for his medicine because that's how we all came in this thing. Yeah, it's wrecking this fun now or whatever, but we all started medicinal trying to help people and giving things away. I used to sit up at the dispensary with you and I used to see sick people coming in. The sickest people I ever saw in my life. And I remember you guys had a compassion program and stuff like that and you know, you used to give them, you know, a free tree and you know, there's people coming in with Parkinson's, there's people coming in with HIV that was really sick. And so that's the angle that I came on. It was kids having seizures and, you know, like, you know, all of that RSO that we used to have, we used to make, we never charged for that. We was giving that stuff away. I miss that. That's what I miss most about the 215 shit was that compassion day was big. I remember having to check a few employees back in this. They would complain. I'm like, what you complaining about, bro? Yeah, we're busy all day, but look what we're doing. We're giving people that really need this shit, this shit. Right. Like, it was big. Like, shout out to my old uh, mentor, my mentor, my old uh, manager and boss, Kathleen. She had that vision with yeah, that, with the compassion. Yeah, no money. And she let us do our thing in that store, too, man. Yeah, like, we did. made that, we, we made memories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, <laughs> come up the hill, yeah. <laughs> man, that, uh, right across the bridge, too, first stop. Yeah. That store is monumental, but, we got a lot of history and man I just I appreciate the way you get down because when it comes to this CBD Delta HAC shit I remember you moving me before it was in my thing to move me it's a, it's a big hustle now and a bunch of people are getting into it but I remember you just going crazy for it bro yeah, in the very crazy. beginning yeah and I, very was beginning. To, I was trying to tell you we took a lot of abuse for that they just like you guys sell weed just sell weed leave that hip stuff and CBD alone but I knew that um, CBD was medicinal and, you know, from use because I have a back issue. You know what I mean? So I know that it gave me relief, although it may have been temporary, it made my back feel better. So when I know things, I believe in them and I'm going to push them. You know, I don't care what anybody else is saying. If, if he believe in it, I'm going to push it and I'm going to go. Yeah, but the quality of CBD flower you were getting was like looking like indoor. I remember when I FaceTimed you when, it, when you, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I was like, bro, what the fuck is this? I'm a hunter. I'm going to find the best of the best. That's what I do. I'm going to hunt. I'm going to find it. And it was a lot of, uh, I would say, garbage out there, what have you. You know what I mean? So it's a lot of people just try to come in this thing and it's it's all about the money. It's not about the quality. I've always been about the quality over quality. You know, always about quality over quality for me 
you know, and for my brand for Gas House. So, man, that's that put me on a lot of game too, because a lot of people I know, especially older people, they can't handle this shit. They right can't. Here. They can't my handle dad, it. My and dad can't. My dad can't either. And and even like homies, like homies that used to smoke, a lot of people that used to right. smoke, you're hearing this a lot more. Is like, now nah, I get a panic attack when I smoke. Now nah, I get nervous. Right. That good CBD provides them an opportunity to still kind of you know socialize. You got something there. You're doing your thing. Now everyone can handle this power, right. this pack. Right. This, this, this power pack right here, baby. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. It's to put you down for a day. We all know that. Yeah. So. <sighs> It's packed. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you made you made another good move okay. recently. Mm-hmm. The gas house smoke shop. Oh yes. Cause it's like I heard you when you were telling me on the phone. I I heard you. I said, yeah, that's cool. I could I could see it. But now when I seen it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you saw it. What you think? And where I seen it next to? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I just I just kind of sit back and watch the market, and being in the the hemp space and dealing with the CBD and all the other cannabinoids, I was taking my product to a lot of these smoke shops, and so I could see that okay, a lot of these people in the smoke shops, you know, they really didn't understand what they had, you know what I mean, and so I felt that it was a void in that area. I you know, I think like, okay, well, I want you to be able to get this product, a good product, whatever it is, and it's not just CBD, it's hemp, it's whatever we have. I want you to be able to get our same product all over the country. So I was just like, you know, I see what's going on. Brick and mortar is kind of one of those businesses that's real tricky right now, but um, if you pay attention, you know, like, smoke shops kind of, they are a brick and mortar, kind of like, you know, how Subway was. I mean, not, not a big investment to get in. You know what I mean? A way to... It's like not just how how dope the smoke shop is, but tell them where you put it next to, and if, if this is a if you know you know type thing. Well, it's a, you know you know type thing. You know, it's like we got we're going to DC. You know, of course. You know what I mean? We come to the first the first location. What's first, what? It's what's in this, Miami, but it's and next it's to in what? Strip club, and it's next to a restaurant. And it's twenty four hours, and it's just kind of like a playground. The licking. That's what it is. It's a playground. It's next the, lick, to the licking. The licking. Room. The licking got a lot of good traffic. You know what I'm saying? Shout out and to the homie. Def- yep, it's a destination spot. It's a destination spot. And so when I seen that food and that gas house smoke shop, I was like, oh, this motherfucker is a motherfucker, bro. Yes. Cause they gonna pull up, they gonna need to get, they gonna get some food. You know, everyone going there. I mean, a good amount of people are definitely oh, yeah. blowing big tree. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. You gonna be an educated people on this HAC, this Delta, this CBD, this yep. hemp. But also, you probably gonna have all the roll up for them. Mm-hmm. Gonna have the leaves. You gonna have the papers. You're gonna have the consumption grinders. lounge in the back. You got a consumption lounge in the back. Gonna like have it's, some cookie product there. You know all, man, all, all of the new drops and stuff. That you all the got, new all shit. Your fresh stuff. All you new see, yeah. you see it velour down yeah. to down down to the feet. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I just feel like you can get out the plane, come to the spot, get some food, smoke, get your, whatever your accessory is, your blunts, your papers. If you're into nicotine vapes or what have you, and you can go see some beautiful women. You know, all same parking lot. I'm not being rude, I promise. I'm just checking on our DoorDash, make sure we get our pack. Oh yeah, to my stomach. We'll get our pack. Uh-huh. So you're gonna you're you're about to actually expand uh, the smoke shop. You're gonna take that and put it multiple places? I am and um uh, I have so much interest in, you know, there's so many people that wanna be a part of helping us grow the brand the brand. And so this is a way that, you know, we can build something together that we can, you know, we can grow this brand together. So yeah, definitely. All right, so Gas House, I want you to really, like, explain, because, you know, a lot of people are going to know who you are, but for those that don't know who you are, like, you got big vision with Gas House, bro, and, like, I think that, like, the way you're setting your shit up is super unique. I kind of want for you to break down your vision, like, how you're setting up Gas House and what your goals are nationwide. I like that you ain't really rushed into too many things. I know you've had a lot of offers. A lot of people have been trying to rock with you. Yeah. They've been trying to really, like, get you to come in you know even us like we're, we're trying to do as much with you as possible but like break down your your, your strategy for the company and your purpose behind it man. my purpose behind the company well I want to create something that's going to be here even after I'm gone you know so um, I want to create something that's solid something that's quality uh, I want to do something that hadn't been done before you know what I mean I want to leave I want to leave something here to my family you know what I mean and I want to I want to be something beautiful, man. Just like you got, you got Budweiser. You got to create that. He's gone. You know, you created something as well, Burn Cook. He's gonna be here long after you're gone. 
Um, they're going to talk about it. It's influential. You know, it's it's positive. Um, you know, it's putting money in people's pockets. I, sometimes I, I sit here and think about, like, how far it trickled down and how many people that you're feeding that you don't know. You know, all the way down to the tremor or whatever. And so I want to create something that's, you know, that's, that's worldwide, that's global, you know what I mean? And so, um, and like you say, I've been offered, us, you know, quite a few partnerships or what have you, but it just had to make sense for me. You know, we work real good together, that's obvious, so. Man, I respect that though. No money, so. I respect that though, because it's you've love. been offered a it's lot love. of shit that could just took you like that overnight, but you, yeah. we've always had the conversation and we, we chop it up and you're like, nah, I gotta make sure that this is done right. Like, this is bigger than just a, you know, yeah. It's bigger than just a, a quick play for you. You really care. Going back to the calendar, you really care about the weed. You want to make sure your product is good. You want to make sure your vision is executed. You know, you just you haven't put yourself in a box. You're hustling like a motherfucker. And for the people that don't know, I think one of the most unique things about your background is where you come from the hospitality industry. Yep. When I first met you, you owned one of the biggest nightclubs in Atlanta, and um, that trans transitioned into Club Mansion, which was fucking insane. Yeah. Now I'm into, saying. what's the name of the new spot? Life ATL now, and sh I think we're the number one spot in ATL right now. I mean, again. It's, it's packed again, you know. So from dream to mansion to life, right? Mm -hmm. So when you come, I think that's where we share a lot of things in common, because when you come from that industry, you understand how to host somebody, how to make sure the customer feels appreciated. You understand dealing with a mass, mass amount of customers, how to fix a, a situation if something goes wrong, how to make it right by the customer. Like, you really you really tapped into that hospitality oh, oh, side of oh, shit. Yeah, yes, for sure. You know, I'm, I'm the kind of person that I like to treat everybody very well, man. You know, like everybody's like, because you're a star, there's nothing. You know, my motto was, was dreams, you know, where we treat everybody as a star. And I really mean that, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm never going to like make a person feel slighted and stuff like that. I'm very appreciative of everyone. You know what I mean? I want your interaction with me to be positive and I'm, you know, I'm always going to be nice and courteous. That's just who I am, man, you know, so. Hospitality was just like, an, it comes natural to me, you know. So you come to town, I'll be trying to steal you. Anybody you call me, I'm just like, hey, I'm always really entertained. And if I'm not there, I'm always ready to connect the dots. So Connect the dots is hella important. Man, Club Mansion is probably, I probably had some of my best memories in that club. Rest in peace to our brother Phil. Yeah. I remember when you guys were building that. I remember when I first met you, it was inside of Club Mansion before it was actually Club Dream. Mansion. It was Dreams. just a, it was Dream. it was the end of Dream. End of Dreams, yeah. And you guys were about to go into construction. Yep. I remember you telling me how you guys were gonna do it, and I remember coming back and seeing it. And that opened up my eyes to the South so much, man. Like I right. learned about the South and how important and how influential Atlanta is to right. culture though. Not yeah. just like um not just music wise, but like the culture coming from fashion, Atlanta. Fashion, everything. Fashion, fashion just I mean, fashion, language, food, language, language saying, even like what alcohol is hot, what's right, not. Exactly. Like, man, your club was fucking going crazy, bro. Yeah, well, it was like, going crazy. It, it was. It and I, like, I haven't had a chance to experience life yet, but I seen you had the mafia kitchen in the background. Oh, yeah. You know, I like food. I seen it because I remember one of the one of the things I used to love most about Mansion was you had that food ready to go. I'm always, hey man, you're in there smoking this, you know, this tree, man. You gotta <laughs> feed these hungry people, man. You know what I mean? I used to. What was the plate I used to get? So in Club Mansion, um, I used to go to that window, order something, man. It was so good, bro. But the fact like that you could actually order food like that and just be right on deck, man, that's just fire as hell, brother. Fire yes, as hell. My bad. We're making sure our good shit's you know, good. We pull that video up of uh, you and Phil, the champagne showers. Oh, man. You remember that? Yeah, I don't put you on the spot like that. No, <laughs> we did it. We we did we pour champagne on this chick, man. We were wilding yeah, out in that club, and showers. we gave her a real champagne shower. And you guys actually, you guys actually really pushed me to be more open about. I used to be kind of embarrassed about the music. I he when was. I, what, Hold on, got a story to tell. Chris go ahead, Brown, bro. you got the song with Chris Brown. You didn't have. You got Yoko Ono, you got Chris, you got Wiz. I done booked Chris at the club. Chris there, he right there, burn here. And he just like, I'm like, bro, y'all got a song together. Do you remember we was having a pushing contest? Yeah. And I was trying to push you to, to go on the stage. And he was just like, oh, no, I'm good. I'm like, bro, your, your song just got a two million streams. <laughs> He's standing right there, bro. I'm pushing him. He just like, no, 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 no. You remember that? I remember, bro, listen. Pack Club, Chris Brown's got a table. 
They the DJ Teflon was playing the record. They tried to get me to get on that stand and start rapping. I felt so embarrassed. I was this when I was shy at rapping, right? Yeah. This beginning of years, white album. I think it was during the white mm-hmm. album. And uh and you guys were so innovative because we are all rocking cookie sweaters. You guys helped yeah. me with the cookies brand before it was even a brand. Oh yeah. Yeah. You, everyone we walked in like 15, 20 deep with all cookie hoodies on. Yeah. And I was pouring the bottles on the grill and Chris Brown said, Man, you wildin', Brian. Yeah. You wild, yeah. man. I'm cool, yeah. man. Like, yeah. We was calling them out from like here over here, you know what I'm saying? Table to table. Mm-hmm. But you guys, man, you guys had that shit popping, bro. Champagne showers, yeah. big club nights. That was when I realized that the rest of the world sucks when it comes to going out because you could actually smoke bud in Atlanta and nightclubs. Right. Shout out to Atlanta for that, motherfuckers. Yeah, no, no shit, right? Down south, you was shocked to shot. do that here. No. Just throw you out of the club in California. Man, California, Vegas, even a good yeah. amount of clubs in Miami. You try to light up, you get in the boot. Yeah, they gone. Yeah, you're right. But you always buck the system. We're, we went to dinner last time in Komodo. You fired up right there. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh-huh. I, I am a system bucker, and I will fire it up anyway. I don't know if that's a good thing, but, yeah, I'll check the temperature. You know yeah. that. You know. Sometimes you got to check the temperature, man. I check the temperature on that. Yeah, yeah. you got to, man. So... Is that what I see? think it is right there to the right? Let me see it. Right here, baby. You are the first person to touch that outside of me. You would do some fly-ass packaging, make us all yeah. feel oh, feel yeah, crazy. Man. Yeah, you, you know, everybody just want to get the mylar and the sticker and stuff and give you packaging and stuff, whatever. That is beautiful, right? So that's a, that that's that's a dream right there, man. Break down like what when's this happening? How's this happening? Cause well, you see right there, Pluto, me, bitch. Yes, sir. Um, I see drop is gonna be uh, November twenty fifth, which is Black Friday. Uh, this is something we've been working on for um, about eighteen months and stuff. Um, you know, we had test seeds and stuff or what have you. Uh, we've already found some good stuff. You know what I mean? It's some some, you ran some, through these yourself too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we are. You know, we had to test. We had to test and make sure everything's gone. So we already found some good stuff and uh, really excited about this. Uh, this is Gas House first seed drop. Um, you know, it's like we got a lot of, it's a lot of chatter about this right now. Have you thought about the price yet? Yeah, I thought about the price. <laughs> yeah, I thought about the price. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's, 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 you know how I look at things. I'm like, you go out. <laughs> Speaking to my people, man, you go out, buy a bottle of cap, Casamigos, you drink it, you get drunk that night, you wake up the next morning, you're sober. It's just, it's, it's a much better investment to me. I don't care if you know how to grow or not, just having this and, uh... It's like a, it's like a time capsule. It's a time capsule. I got, it's a time I have seeds that are 10 years old, you know, that still gonna pop, you know what I mean, or whatever, and so, um, it is a time capsule, and, uh... This is, I mean, man, this is, it's all hard up in here, you know? We're giving this to the world now. It's gonna be everywhere, bro. I seen them go crazy on IG even with the shadow band. They go crazy. Yeah, we're giving this, we're giving this to the world, man. We're giving this to the world, man. What you gonna do? Slightly under 500. Smart. Smart. Yeah, like 450. You know what I mean? 450 ish. You know? One seed can change your life, though. Nah, you know, know that. You already know that. And and One seed um, can change your life. you know, homegirls starting to pop a lot too. A lot of people yeah. are starting to buy these tents. They're starting to get their setup popping, and that's tight to see. Like even in NY, like I met a really cool dude in NY. Uh, we we're just chopping game. He's an artist, and he took us up to his art studio, and that boy had a tent rocking. Had a tent rocking. Rocking right. though. Right. Rockin'. No, I know. It's just like, you know, I want to tell the story about Pluto right quick. Please, like yeah. you know, you know where it's getting. To. I was waiting for you. Okay, let me tell a story about Pluto. I was at uh, Emerald Cup. I want to say 2018, and uh, a friend of mine named Ryan uh, was an extractor. You know, he we had our booth. Our booth was popping. Everybody was smoking uh, biscotti in 41, and so you know, people come to the booth because everybody always feel, figure that they have the next one. So. You know, they, they want you to check your strains out, just like they bring burn bags, they bring me bags. We got people, they just, hey, check it out, check it out. Well, everybody had the same profile. It was just 
different Forty War, different Scotties remix. That was all. They were just remixing that just, shit way just, too just much. Just remix. Yeah. And so uh, Ryan brought this guy over uh, to my booth, and I was just like, "Hey, what's up?" He's like, "Hey, check this out." He introduced me to Casey, and uh, whatever. And so. He had one bud, right? And I took the bud and I smelled it. And I was just like, whoa. So it had these notes in it. And it's just like, was so interesting to me that I was just like, this is unique right here. And I just kind of like looked at him and I made sure I said, hey, I like this or whatever. You know, let's, we exchange numbers. And so I tucked that. I didn't want to smoke it. I wanted to smoke that in the morning, fresh. You know, all my senses and stuff, smell, taste, and everything on point in the morning. Height, heightened senses in the morning. It takes flavor, you know. And so uh, next, when I got home, I might have lost everything else, but I had that bud. And so I think I had enough to roll up two joints. And I rolled it up, and when I smelled it, or I tasted it, I was like, oh, shit, the taste, the smell translates the taste. Sometimes you smell these things, and, these, and they don't translate the taste. taste bland as hell sometimes. Bland. Yeah. And the smell translates the taste. And then it, the feeling, everything, the high was there, and it checked all of the boxes for me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, the smell, taste, flavor, or what have you, uh, aroma. It's just like, and I was like, this is the one. I was like, this is it. And, and so I texted him, I was just like, hey, I like that. Let, let, let's, let's get that going, or what have you. And so uh, it took us a while, you know, to get the rooms up and stuff. And so, once we start putting her into production, uh, I mean, it was all she wrote. We kept a small batch. Um, we kept her on the farm in Mendo, which was the most important thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> or if we didn't have her on the farm in Mendo, she would be everywhere. You, it would have leaked like a motherfucker. It would have leaked, and so I knew that. And so that's the reason you guys can't go get the shit everywhere. And that's the reason we just put it at select stores, you know, because we didn't want her to leak, you know what I mean, at all. We didn't want her watered down as well because he and I both have seen, you know, how that can destroy a strain, a, a perfectly good strain, if it falls into the wrong hands, you know what I mean? It allows you to make it a staple and keep the integrity there yeah. because, like, there's, you know, when the shit leaks, it's like a blessing and a curse. Like, it's like a cheerleader. It makes everyone fired up because they're getting the cuts. They're talking about it. But the way that the game is now, like, you got to keep something exclusive because what else is going to keep people coming in the stores right. and shit like that? Like, right. they grew the shit out of this shit in Miami. Right. They grew no, the exactly. shit out of it. Yeah, they People did. are fired up they going did. to buy it there. They but did. if it was leaked like that and there was packs of Pluto everywhere and maybe people wouldn't be so right. fired up. Right, they wouldn't be. And I, I had sit back and just watch that. I watched, you know, so I knew. I said, so, you know what? Let's keep it down here. You know what I mean? We're gonna keep putting this fire out, you know. We're gonna keep this thing limited. When we drop it, you know, it's gonna sell out. You know what I mean? So, and that's been that's that's what it's been, and that's what it is. What's uh, what's the official cross for the people that don't know Pluto? Well, it's a gelato cross with a TK ninety one, back off TK ninety one, and uh, it comes off of a C Jerky's line uh, cases, just you know, just like this. Somebody gave him some seeds, they, they got from Seed Junkie, and he pheno hunted. And he found the one? He found the one that was different, and he was just like, it's... And it's crazy, because this tastes like a, this tastes like a grape. If I had to describe the flavor of what I'm smoking right now, let me try to get a fresh description, but... It's like a grape, runts, soap... Like with a little gas in the background, like yeah. you could taste it. Yeah, yeah exactly. you could taste like the OG in there a little yeah, bit. You can. Yeah, you can. but you wouldn't think that gelato is in it. Like a gelato thirty three or forty one. Thirty three. You know, that's a thirty three. That's where the sweetness is coming from. Yeah, you yeah, know what it is. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, I you think I'm familiar with that. Yeah, the gas. Is, but I wonder where that soap is coming from. Just it was that's a uniqueness, man. It just was that one that was different. It was that one that was different. You know? Are you ever gonna stop being so hands on? No. He's he's like me. He's a no. sick fuck. He's running everything. He's mm -hmm. he's touching it. Whether it's marketing, packaging, yeah. branding, operations, deliveries. Like I remember when you started popping off Gas House in California back when the tuna cans were popping. 
Ooh. 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 Boy, you didn't go tuna cans. <laughs> oh, he hated the tuna cans. <laughs> man, boy. The tuna cans, man. That was a uh, that was an era. Man. I know some people smiling about the tuna cans out there. Yeah, I made a lot of money off the tuna cans. Dude. Man, that boy, we had great debates about the tuna can. I I couldn't, but man, you owned it. Yeah, I did. I you did. owned it. You I actually did. helped rents a lot back then too. Yeah, for sure. You know, I had that in the can, and that's how we popped them all at first. And uh, I seen it. You know, My, I, I smiled. I know Phil was in heaven smiling. You ran that bitch up. Yeah, we did. Bro. You ran it up. No, we did. We had to get our own machine. Yeah, yeah, that's why. Like, that's why I really want. Like, that's why I wanted to kidnap you for this episode because yeah, people made set up, guys. I didn't yeah, notice. Nah, he he, just, he was supposed to come here. We were supposed to talk about the seed drop uh, happening on fucking what is it Friday? Friday. Yeah. yeah. So, but I was like, you know what? Like, people respect the brand. People respect the strain. People mm-hmm. love that it's a real black owned operated company. But mm-hmm. people don't know that you're a hardworking ass operating trapping ass motherfucker, bro, with real legacy, oh, real yeah. history. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like with real, with real intent, with real roots in this shit, bro. Yeah. So yeah. much roots that we even have a, a shit something we're working on and we ain't even shared this with the world yet. We ain't gonna say who we're working on with or anything like that. But we're working on a show right now and you guys have been hearing me talking about PAX for a long time and uh we found a pretty credible partner for PAX. Yeah, we found a very and um it's based on true events and it really breaks down the roots of this shit because it's a lot deeper than people understand. It's a lot deeper than, than what's ever been talked about and that shit's uh, that shit's gonna be crazy. Yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a story, man. It, it is gonna be crazy, man. It is, and we're gonna be hands on with that thing too. So. Nah, we are, and like when we're like in the writing room and yeah. we're kind of hearing like before we met each other, history like because you knew me when 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 I met you and I met you and I knew you, but we didn't know about the before. And when you start telling me some of them childhood stories, and we don't even have to tell them here because we're gonna we're gonna let the people see it in the real time. But I was blown away. I was like, man, my boy really got, he really got a special story, and so yeah. packs you guys is uh, we've been talking about it for a long time, but just like everything else, you know, you want to take your time and do it right, but that show is about to be crazy. Yeah, that's and not I'm glad, be. I'm glad we took our time. Yeah, that's not just gonna be some regular weed story that people, you know, no, it's it, enough for those. It's a, it's a life story, bro, yeah, and it's, yeah. it's a really good life story. I yeah. think Pax is like. People will relate to it because it is about cannabis, and people will relate to it because it covers different stages of the game, right. from the, you know from the streets to the medical to the recreational. But people will love it because it's a good life story. Definitely a good life story. It's a really it's good. Real it's life. really like <laughs> real life. Yeah. And we lived it. Yeah, we lived it. And we're here to tell it. Yeah, for sure. And a lot, of, a lot of good crime things that you hear nowadays or that you see is told by a fucking rat. Yeah, exactly. Right? Like, yeah. a lot of the good crime movies that came out is right. based on a rat. Right. You know, and right. it sucks. So it's dope that the people, the level of people that we're fucking with respected us enough to work with us and tell this story. Yeah, for sure. No doubt. I'm we fired up on that. We pulled off one. Yeah, we, we got did. one. We got one. Yeah, we pulled off one. We got one. Yeah. We got a lot of things. We have, we have to turn up splash damage a lot, too, because... Mm-hmm. I see the weirdo with the lisp. I won't say his name. Um, I see him trying to trying to bite that product. And you were you were very innovative at first with it. Now that we have Social Club and we don't have to yep. count how many posts we do a day because we're worried about our algorithm getting capped and shit. Right. We could pop off splash damage, but splash damage is the backpack with the patches. And when I seen that shit, I was like, man, what the fuck is this? Yeah. And not only does he have, you know. A dope ass product, but you got a contract with the or we we got a contract mm-hmm. with the NBA. Yeah, yeah, yep. They have a, a NBA lab program. It's an incubator program. So uh, we got that a couple years ago. Uh, we tried to get it maybe three years ago, and uh, my nephew Stephen and um, his lady Monica they just kept kept at it until they secured that because we we didn't get it the first time. Spray ground got it. Yeah, and then. Our spray ground had it. We ended up getting it. And then COVID happened, so it messed up all of the shipping or what have you. And so uh, we were a- actually able this year to produce some. And so we're coming with the whole lineup in the fall. Uh, really, really exciting. We've been working really, really hard on them, hard on that. So, yeah. I, I truly believe that company could be huge because besides like sports or besides mm-hmm. us, cannabis, anyone that's a fan of anything could pick their own patches and right. deck their backpack out. That shit yeah. is hard. We can't keep them. 
I mean, that's the thing. Like we and order, you got the ones that flash and, and man, move with the beat and shit them. like yeah, that. We can't keep them. Like we gonna have to order tens of thousands, I guess, because we do those runs and then when we release them, like they sell out. Like if it's, you know, they sold out so fast. You remember the drop that we did? They sold out so fast that I called somebody on your team to to make sure they were gone because we thought it was a glitch in the system. That's how fast they sold Yeah, out. people were trying to buy, they were trying minutes. to buy one of mine off of me for like 500 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, people buy, they been, buy them off your back. So, yeah, yeah definitely, uh, definitely was a good product and people are really into it. And it started off at cannabis and now it's like, okay, okay, I mean, basketball and like you were saying, it's like, we got, you know, let's go at Disney, you know, let's go at NASCAR, let's just go at, you know what I mean? So it's just, it's, it's a special product, unique product. I put it like that. It's fucking fly as hell. Yeah, that's why. What's uh, what's the current state of herb right now in Mississippi? Is it is it medical or is it it's, rec? It's uh, it's medical, and um, you know, like that's a big step for Mississippi. Um, I would have thought they would have been last, but they wasn't. And the, and the program is not terrible, the way you designed it. Maybe the the limits are a little bit lower, what have you, but. You know, you take baby steps before big steps. I was just like, okay, you know, it's medical there. Like, you know, it's something that, you know, I'm definitely looking at at this point. So, so can they grow and sell flour there? Or is it like mostly like vapes and shit like that? Um, yes, they'll be able to grow and sell flour. The good thing that they did that they did was kept it where it's gonna be only indoor for right now. So, oh, fire! You know, it won't, yeah. You know. I hate when the market legalizes and then the only yeah. people in positions like you're looking at New York right now. New York legalized. It was all hemp farmers that got the first licenses, and they all, they have all this old um, kind of trippy outdoor weed that's just sitting there. For the consumers, so you know that that's a pretty shitty oh, yeah. situation, right there. It, it takes a long time to build, like to build out like a real indoor grow that's functional and running, right. running proper and whatnot. So, fuck yeah, I keep the indoor popping in Mississippi, man. man. Keep the indoor popping in Mississippi, bro. You think you'll ever open up a store out there? Yeah, I will. That's a goal to you, or it's a goal. I just feel like you know that's that's where I'm from. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I'm definitely going to open up a store. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go in there first with my gas house, smoke shops, and then, you know, we'll, we'll get a dispensary, you know what I mean? But, yeah, definitely. What's the best What's the best weed outside of our circle? Like, even thinking back to, like, to the days when you were shopping in Seattle before you were coming to Cali, like, what's, what's some of the best uh, herb you ever smoked? I had a Hawaiian haze that was incredible. And if anybody in Seattle know where that Hawaiian is, man, just reach out. Oh, yeah, That's, we were talking about that. And that thing was, it was mean. And the guys that, the old school guys, they know what I'm talking about. And it was the best thing smoking, man. Period. Hawaiian haze. Yeah. It was, it was the it was the one. And, you know, the smell, you know, you come in the room, you know, you know it. And it was just, it was going to lay you out, man. It was powerful. It was uh, like a sedative. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Well, since we're doing that, I'm gonna put one out there too. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a hell Mary. Back in the days when I was working at the Hemp Center, there was this dude that used to come in, skinny dude. He was a biker, and the bikers had the had the hold on some shit called the obscure head sativa, Ooh. and it, obscure head okay. sativa, and it was really the craziest version of what everyone calls Pelly as well. It was the same same flavor profile as a Pelly. And it was so good, Baldhead Rick and uh, Selsky used to come to my house when I was at high school mm. and then try to buy sacks off it. My mom would be pissed, like, hey, when you're at school, these guys came here and rang the doorbell. They were looking for you. I'm like, mm. oh, shit, I know why they're looking for me. So if anyone out there um, knows some guys that are... Because, see, the Pelly used to come from Canada, right? Mm -hmm. But these guys were growing it in Cali. And they made a very big deal about it. And they're very, 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 very exclusive. You could not get it. So, um, dear biker dude that used to come into the Ham Center, I miss you a lot. And I, I want to find you really bad. And I, I hope that one of you guys preserve this obscure head sativa. That's the craziest name I ever heard. I didn't like the name, but yeah. that shit was fire. That shit was fire. I had bald head Rick and Selsky coming to my house, ringing the doorbell, looking for me because I was at school Ooh. for that pack. That pack was fire. It was gangster, huh? 
It was yeah. fire. It was 400 a zip. You could only get it one zip at a time. And they made it very, like, political on how you got the zip and whatnot. And, yeah. You know, them bikers are real ones, dude. Well, yeah. Them dudes yeah. are real ones. I'm yeah. not going to say which bike, whatever, but they was real ones, bro. Yeah, yeah. Fire. There's some things around here that's still exclusive like that. There's some... There's some hazes around here that only you got to be in a circle to get that people, you know, you know, still pay five, six hundred dollars an ounce for. So yeah. What's uh What's the next strand you guys are working on right now? I mean, what we did is, you know, I took Pluto. I crossed out of everything, bro. So you hit it with everything. I, mean, I hit out of everything. When I say everything, you got a Pluto London Pound Cake seventy five. I didn't hit it every. I didn't hit it to about like forty different strains. I'm gonna get. To, I'm gonna get the list to you. I get it. Like, give I'm me the list. The list. Yeah, Cause so, you know we just got approved. Uh, you know the shipping containers over there on one log. Yeah, we just got we just got approved uh, this week to start popping seeds. So now they're just doing test runs, making sure everything is good. But we got seven fully decked out shipping containers dedicated to popping seeds. So mm. if you got some shit, yeah, I got Mr. C pop. I'm ready on the way to hunt. Uh, I'm ready to hunt. Yeah, I got Mr. C pop on the way. Case about to pull up. So you know that's Mr. C pop. You, you got to be a special. Type of person that to hunt through thousands of seeds it takes you know a lot I mean? of patience, man. A like lot. you have to a tag lot. everything, label it, yeah. find the males, find females. Yeah. You know, back it up, it run it, then yeah, rerun yeah, it. This is a fuck pain in the ass. Yeah, it is a pain, but it's worth it when it you when you, when you got a full team. And that's why I'm excited about Humble. Shout out to my team over at One Log. We got a full team. We got Cookies You over there in effect yeah. too. So we got a lot of hands on deck uh, for that, and we got the nursery there, but. So does that mean that they the people can expect more seeds from from Gas House yeah, besides yeah, the Pluto yeah, drop? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We're coming out with a whole Pluto line. You know what I mean? I was talking to Kingston about it, and uh, you know, it's a good for five batch of Pluto I ever had coming here. But you know, shout out to Kingston, bro. <laughs> he go, he, he, that boy go. <laughs> he goes crazy. Yeah, he go crazy, boy. You know, he go crazy. But yeah, we got a uh, lot of crosses coming out, um, and we're coming out with a whole Pluto line, man. She, she, we hit her everything. We hit her to everything. Oh, yeah. Didn't tell you where to get the seeds. Seeds, S-E-E-D-S, dot cookies with an S, dot co. Seeds, dot cookies, dot co. That's where the seed drop is happening. Matter of fact, you can go there right now, and you can sign up any email and stuff or what have you, and you can have early access. I think they're going to let them have access maybe on Thursday is what I was hearing. So Man, on Thanksgiving? Yeah. Well, what a present. Like, serious. Definitely reserve these yeah, seeds. I think sure. these seeds are gonna go fast as hell. Yeah. This Friday we're dropping these, the cookie seed bank. I think what the tightest thing about the seed bank is is that you'll see besides our own genetics, we got a family of brands on there. We got Gas House, a bunch of other people. I know Grand Flora got some really good things. I know Chris uh uh spun off his own thing, Cypher Genetics. Mm -hmm. Dr. Chris, he got some stuff up mm -hmm. there. I believe Powers Up got a nice menu on there. My big brother Kevin Drogery got a crazy menu of yeah. like legacy genetics yeah. from Humboldt yeah. County on there. Yeah. Um, fuck, a bunch of players got some shit on there, man. Yeah. So as we as we continue to build and we kind of prove the the model, I think we'll see more brands on the C Bank and For sure. shit. I'm fired up to I'm fired up to even get this little episode out of you because I we we got some business to go to yeah. go discuss off of camera. We about to go handle that. I got some Japanese food that hope he arrives. Exactly. We're starving right now. We're about to get high. I'm about to roll hash hole with the rest of this Pluto. Ooh. You want to say anything else? How could, how could they find you on socials? Uh, what's your what's your social club? Uh, okay, my social club is Felix Murray M U R R Y E N T. That's my social club. Same thing on Instagram. Felix Murray E N T, and we are Gas House on social club. On IG, we are Gas House underscore the brand. One of the biggest. One of the biggest hearted, kindest motherfuckers I know. One of the most inspirational guys I know. This guy supported me before Cookies when I was too scared to rap on stage. Man, I saw it in you, bro. I saw it. And I, sorry about interrupting you, but I saw it in you. And I was telling Phil the whole time. I know, you know, I know you, bro. Like, like I saw it. I was telling Phil the whole time. You know, I was like, man, he, he, yeah, he, he got that. I spent the whole time, so I was like, yeah, I saw it. I remember what Phil said. He said, big boy, why don't you just stick to the pack? You good with the pack. With the rap, you're chasing dreams. And yeah. I said, man, I love the rap, man. I'm going to stick with it. He used to make fun of me for having the cameras, right? He used yeah, to be like, like, get out of here with that camera. He used to be, he used running to, from that camera. He used to be like, no man. footage of nothing, y'all. <laughs> like, he, no. He used to, he used to say, say, man. 
We're going to the club, motherfucking club. What you bringing the camera in for, man? You want to look like a rapper? You want to be a cameraman? Which one is it? But I wish I had that footage. But what he told me was the reason why we're going to get behind you and support you and then actually, you know, help you build your career is because you won't stop. He won't the stop. motherfucker that won't stop oh, is going to make it. He won't stop. Ain't yeah, no so, stop you know, shout out to Phil because those words yeah. actually kept me going when I felt like giving up. I thought about what he said. He said, Big boy, I'm going to get behind you because you won't stop. A motherfucker that stop. don't stop makes quit. it. I'm like, shit. Man, come on, man. You shot a what? You shot a $100,000 video for how much? What you call a video? $1,500. $1,500. $100,000 video for 1500 bro. And he Huge. did. He, he did that. Yeah, because, yeah. They brought that. me to where all the 18 wheeler trucks are and uh, we just knocked on doors. We knocked on doors until a truck driver let me drive his truck, and I don't even know how to drive. That's the craziest thing. It's crazy, bro. It's craziest crazy. thing. Craziest crazy. shit ever. Yeah. Man, shout out to my brother Felix Murray, man. Gas House, The Brands, Life ATL, Gas yes, House, sir. Smoke Shop, Pluto Me, bitch. I got some Pluto right now. I'm about to roll this. The with real the one. I'm about to roll the real Pluto with a cereal a la mode hash hole after we have some hibachi, some sushi, motherfucker. Ooh. This is Chopping Game yes. with my brother Felix Murray, man. Gas House, The Brand. And we's out. Yeah, rap.